How's it going guys? In today's video I'm going to walk you through the steps on how you bleed air out of your hot water heating system. It's a real easy process. Shouldn't take you very long. You could save a few bucks without having to call a plumber. So this is the boiler in my house. I've been hearing air in the baseboards and in the pipes for about the past week or so, which tells me that I have to bleed that air out. Now, this is going to be a similar process for most of the boilers out there. You're just going to have to determine how you're going to go about doing it. So on my system here, I have three zones. And you could tell that on my specific system uh, from the fact that I have three circulator pumps. Now, sometimes systems are set up with one circulator pump and then they add something to the system called a zone valve. I do not have that here, but it's very possible that yours is set up that way. Best thing I could tell you is look for valves on the piping coming out of your boiler. Now you can see over here, these are the valves we're going to be looking for. These are the individual zones or heating zones in the house on my system. So as I told you before, I have three heating zones. I have one in the basement, I have one on the first floor, and one on the second floor. Now this is called an air purge station. It's essentially just a valve similar to the valves outside your house that you hook a hose up to. And I have one here, there's another one up here, and then if you come over here, here's another one, okay? That's where we're going to be hooking up a hose and essentially draining water out of the system, which also takes the air out of the system as well, okay? The first step with this process on any system is to shut the boiler off. Doesn't matter if you have gas or oil, find your service switch, shut it off. You do not want the boiler running during this process. Okay, you're gonna take your hose and you're gonna pick a zone to start. So I'm gonna work front to back here and I'm gonna go ahead and hook the hose up. You wanna make sure this is nice and tight. Now I have this hose running over to the bathroom that I have in my basement. What you're gonna do next is, there's gonna be another set of valves hopefully on your system. And what these valves do is they stop the water flow from the zone back into the boiler. So that's this valve, this valve, and this valve. They might not be vo valves like this. They might be a valve like this. In any case, you're gonna to wanna to shut those off. You're gonna to wanna to shut all three of them off in my case here. If you have two zones, you'd shut two off. If you have one zone, you'd shut one off. Got to look again what you have and figure it out. So the reason we shut these valves off during the purging process is because we want to push all the air out of the system and not allow it to circulate back into the system once it's out. So to show you how this works, this is called a fill valve. Sometimes it's called a makeup water valve. What this does is it injects regular domestic water, either if you have it from the city or if you have a well. It adds water into the system as the water evaporates. Now it does evaporate. Even though it's a closed system, you will lose water over time, which is why this will inject water back in. It maintains a certain pressure in the system, usually around 12 PSI. All right, so that water in my system gets injected after the circulator pumps, goes through the boiler, and then comes back out the supply, goes through all the baseboards or radiators in the house. Once it's done, comes back down this pipe here, and because we now have this valve off, it can no longer return to the boiler. The water is gonna be forced out of this valve here where we have the hose hooked up. So the idea is as you're pushing all the water through the system, it's going to carry all the air that's trapped inside the system out the hose and drain it. Another thing I recommend you do is once you figure out what all these pipes are, get yourself a label maker. If you don't have that, just get a Sharpie marker and just label all the pipes so you know what they are for the future. Okay, so once we have that done, all of our valves are off for our zones, we can start bleeding the system. We're going to go ahead and open this valve up. Now once you open this, obviously, water is going to start coming out of the system. You hear that noise, that is the fill valve starting to add water into the system because it's noticed a pressure drop. We have a pressure drop now because we are draining water out the hose. You're now going to turn your attention over to that fill valve or makeup water valve. And on my particular one you can see this handle coming off here and it's labeled fast fill. What this basically does is once we bring this and pull it down a little bit and move it over, it introduces full city pressure into your system. 
The reason why we want to open that up is we want to introduce more pressure to help push the air out of the system. All right, guys, we're here at the other end now in the bathroom, and this is obviously the end of the hose, and I have that in a five-gallon bucket that is currently filling up. Now, the reason why I have it in a bucket is because the bucket, once it gets full, it's going to overflow, obviously, into the shower drain. But the bucket allows us to see the air coming up out of the system. A lot of times if you just have the hose laying, let's say, at your drain like this, you can't see the air coming out, so you don't know when to stop. Now, it's very noticeable in the beginning if you have a lot of air trapped in your system. The end of this hose will move around, you'll see the water start and stop. It'll be spurting out of the end of the hose, in other words. If you have just a little bit of air trapped in your system, that's going to be difficult to see. By having the hose in the bucket, you can see the air bubbles rising up. You can see right here. See the bubbles coming up? Now that'll be a lot more evident when there's bigger epoxy air trapped in the system. Don't pay any mind to the color of the water. It's perfectly normal for the water to be coming out of the system with this rust color to it. Eventually, as you're introducing fresh water into the system, the water will start to clear up. And you'll also be able to see those air bubbles traveling through the bucket as well a little bit easier. So there is no set rule on how long you have to purge each zone. That's pretty much going to depend on how big the system is, how much air you have trapped in the system, the piping layout on the system. You're just going to be looking at that bucket that I just showed you to see when the air bubbles stop traveling up through the bucket when they exit the hose. You're also going to want to have an adjustable wrench handy. The reason why you need this is you can see here we have some water leaking out of the valve and this is perfectly normal. This thing under the valve handle right here is called a packing nut and since these valves aren't used very often when they're opened up sometimes the packing nut is loose and you'll have water leaking out. So you can see I got a slow drip here. When we're done purging the zone we're going to go ahead and we're going to tighten the packing nut up. It's an easy thing to do and that should stop your leak. While we're waiting for this first zone to purge Sometimes you'll notice after you open one of these valves and take the hose off that you'll develop a drip out of the uh, outlet here where the hose is usually hooked up, even if the valve is shut fully off. And that could just be a bad valve. What you're going to need to get is a brass cap. They sell those in Home Depot or Lowe's. And what you do is you'll just screw that on there and it'll stop the water from flowing out that. During the process of doing this also, you're going to want to go to this valve here that we shut off. And just open it for a second or two and then close it back up. And the reason why we do that is because we can get some air trapped in the short leg of piping here between this valve and this valve. And we want to get that out. By opening this valve, it'll shoot it back through the boiler and hopefully when it comes back around again, uh, it'll exit out this valve here through the hose. So you want to do that a couple times during this process just to help it out. Alright guys, I just checked the other end of this here. We're looking pretty good. I don't see any more air coming out. So what we're going to go ahead and do is shut this valve off now. Before you shut this valve, you want to go back down to your fill valve and return that to the normal position. I can't tell you enough how important that is. And I'm going to get into that in a second. But once you have that thing returned to its normal position, you can go ahead and shut this valve off. All right, we're going to move over to our next zone now. Now be careful because this hose is probably going to be filled with water still. It might leak out this end here. Depending on where you are in your house, it might not be a good thing. I'm in an unfinished part of my basement now, so it's not a big deal. But we're going to go ahead and just screw this guy on to our next zone now. Nice and tight, so we're going to go ahead and open this valve up now. And you can see here this packing nut is leaking a lot more than the other one was, so we'll tighten that one up now. But we're going to go ahead and put our fill valve back to fully open. And we'll also tighten this packing nut while we're here. So a small little turn of that packing nut and the leak stops. So I was mentioning with the fill valve why you want to put that back to normal position before you turn the purge station valve off. The reason why you want to do that is because, again, this is maintaining about 12 PSI in your system. 
There's another valve on the system back here. This is called a pressure relief valve. And what that basically does is it prevents a high pressure condition inside your boiler. And the way that works is these are usually around 30 PSI. If the boiler reaches 30 PSI, that valve will open up, pop off, and it basically dumps water right here on the floor. That's purposely set up like that to not go into a drain and basically flood the area where the boiler is so you know there is an issue and that needs immediate attention. You under no circumstances want that valve to pop off. The reason for that is once that valve opens up, it'll never reseat correctly again and you'll always have a leak out of that pipe there and you're going to have to replace that valve. Obviously something we don't want to do here, so we want to make sure that we return this back down to the normal operating pressure before we shut that valve off. It's not going to happen instantly where it's going to raise up to 30 PSI, but it's an easy thing to forget and you're not going to know you forgot until you start having a flood on your floor wherever your boiler might be. Another good thing we could do while we're waiting for the next zone to purge is to check our expansion tank. Now, the way an expansion tank works is there is a rubber bladder inside this thing. Half this tank is charged with air, usually 12 PSI. That's to match the fill valve. Again, our fill valve is also 12 PSI. And the top of this has water in it from the heating system. And what this does is it'll compensate for different pressure changes in your system. So as you heat water, it expands. The water expands into this tank and presses down onto the bladder in here, compressing the air. You want to make sure that the bottom of this has air in it. Now you can hear that change in pitch when I'm banging on it. Hear how it gets from hollow to solid? That's indicating that this tank is still good. It should sound hollow down where the air is. It should sound solid up top where the water is. Now that depends on how this thing is mounted. I have the inlet for this on top, which is normally how these things should be connected. Sometimes installers will put this thing backwards and the pipe will come in the bottom. So in that case, you're going to be looking for the hollow noise on the top if the pipe is coming in the bottom of it. So that's good in our case here. We don't have to worry about that. This water is coming up pretty good now. This zone's been running for about five minutes. I don't see any air coming up. You can check this a little bit easier by pulling the hose up. And it's tough for you guys to see on camera, but I can see the end of the hose pretty good here, and I don't see any air coming out of that now. Which is telling me we have a pretty good flow with no air in it. So we can go ahead and shut this zone off. Just like before, we're going to go ahead and put this back to its normal position. Come up here, we're going to shut this valve off. Take our hose off and move to our last zone. Last zone is back here. So I'll go ahead and get this nice and tight on here. We'll go ahead and open this valve. Again, open our fill valve up fully, and we'll just see what we got. All right, guys, here's a lot of that air coming out right now. You can see, you can see it all over here, hopefully. Feel the air bubbles? See how dirty the water got now? That's showing me that we Probably got a large pocket of air out of the system just now. It was trapped somewhere in the piping. So that's been running now for about a good 15 minutes. We're going to return our fill valve back to its normal position. And we'll shut this valve off. On a side note, you should hear this valve not making any noise shortly after turning this valve off because it shouldn't be needing to put any more water in the system at that point. So I see our packing nut on this leaking a little bit. So again, we're gonna go ahead and tighten this guy up a little bit. Doesn't take much. And that stop this packing nut's leaking a little bit also. So we'll give that a little bit of a turn. Next, we're gonna go ahead and turn on each individual valve for our zones. This will allow the water to flow back through the boiler again. Once the circulator pumps run, 
Good little trick with valves, if you're not aware of this, is when you turn them fully on, see this can't go anymore now, you turn it back just a hair. You never want them fully on to the point where they're tight. It just prolongs the life of the valve when you do it this way. And it also helps prevent the valve from getting stuck in the open position. So that's it guys, after you get done with that, at this point we can go ahead and turn the boiler back on. Now this is a cold start boiler, so if I don't have any zones right now cooling in the house, this isn't going to turn on. All right, so I'm gonna turn one of the heating zones on in my house so that thing fires. I'll make sure we don't have any issues. All right, guys, just a peek here now at the gauge one more time. You can see we're coming up to operating temperature and the pressure's still looking pretty good. And that's pretty much gonna wrap it up, so. Best thing I could tell you is if you notice that your heating system is getting noisy, you hear gurgling in the pipes through the radiators and baseboards in your house, then go through a similar process like I just demonstrated here and it should solve your problem.